All right, all right. Welcome back. This is uh, going to be uh, RD2L Season 3 Week 3 game, Take 2, between Game is Hard versus LGD Ant. And Game is Hard having some hard gaming problems with picking Captain's Mode instead of Captain's Die Draft. Man. Well, you know, everyone says that's the hardest part of the game, so I can definitely feel their frustration. Yeah. You know, drafting and such. So, to recap... Uh, I've played against LGD Antarctica once in the preseason. Ten seconds to go. They're a pretty solid team. And LPNF actually Ladies has band. some experience as a player on Big AT's team. Yes, I'm a former minion of Big AT from Season 2. Seems like a good guy. He's not capping this time. I guess we managed to convince him that he's not worth trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Capting is a lot of work. Um... Sorry, I gotta mix my volumes a little bit. Alright, no, that should be better. So anyways, we see the Elder Titan and the Lich Ban out really Ten quick. This is as standard as your bands get, honestly. Radiance ban. Actually, these guys are doing their incredibly standard bands. I've been thinking a lot about first ban Lich. I'm not sure if it's worth it. I I don't I have mixed feelings. I mean, I think Lich is an amazing hero, don't get Ten me wrong. But to go. first ban, I mean the issue is just that the lanes that he's really good in are very niche. Dyer's he's not like pick. great try if he tries. He's okay, he's not great. He's not outstanding defensive try lane. He's really amazing at like dual mid, Radiant's dual off pick. lane. Yeah. That kind of thing, which is the more niche. We're seeing a first pick clockwork, which is also pretty common. Uh, uh, mm, that's interesting. Also, a, uh, game is hard, second band, the Death Prophet. So they're banning a lot of early game aggression uh, heroes. Lich is very good in the early game, winning a lane, making mid go really well, and then Death Prophet's just very hard to deal with. That's true. And Clockwork is a pretty stable first pick. Just, the, you know, the 6.79 off equilibrium seconds. changes were a huge boon to him. Amazing ganker. Uh, everybody loves Reserve doing the hooks. Time. So, you know, just great, but I, like the, I still like him as a first pick, even though it's so common. He has uh, a lot from the gameplay and from a spectator perspective. I uh, yeah, I mean, he's does he does really well in the offlane, and the big thing is his initiation in the mid game is extremely good. I mean, you see, and I think you see a lot of people picking that up right now. This current meta, you see a lot of the uh, you see a lot of the clockworks, the timber solves, the storm spirits. These guys that have really nice long initiation ranges. That's true. I mean, it's because I remember last season I never played clockwork. And now I play him like all the time. Yeah, he's just the guy you have to be able to play. So it looks like you know finally now here in season three I'm able to get away with not being able to play Silver. Yeah, uh, it is an interesting metagame change. I wonder Ten if it's just because people feel the need to engage in a lot of mid game aggression. Five seconds. Yeah, he, Silver takes a while to get going, and doing the bear pull stuff isn't as necessary with the new off lane equilibrium. Uh, so we have a Crystal Maiden picked up for game is hard. They're kind of dithering on the second pick. You think they're going to go for another support or try to lock in another top off laner? Well, I think they're going to go carry. We have not seen a lot of Life Sealer play recently, honestly. He's kind of fallen off in this metagame because I think I think people want to get more in the mid game magic damage wise out of their out of their carries. Well, it's kind of an interesting to pick to make right into a Clockwork and now a Viper. Yeah. So Antarctica has a lot right now to deal with the next. Clockworks hook stun goes through BKB. You can't walk through the cogs, and then Viper's neither strike goes through BK goes through BKB. So they yes. have plenty of tools already to deal with Life Stealer without really putting a whole lot of effort into it. Yeah, I mean the the damage doesn't go through, but obviously the slow does, which is an extremely Radiant's important ability. Banned. So you know, and our, uh, LGDA has now banned out their third offlaner. So Game is Hard really needs to. Either think about doing an aggressive trial lane or pick up an aggr a uh, off laner in the next pair of picks because their options are getting pretty limited. Ten seconds to yeah. go. They're kind of down to uh, Furion, Silver. Well, it'd be I interesting to see what they could do. They could go, and people hate this now, but they could go with the defensive trial lane here uh, and say, we'll try to match up against your aggressive trial lane with Crystal Main and Life Seal, which is a pretty strong, safe, you know, controlled lane. Well, like the opposite. Ten they seconds need, to go. There's no off. There's very few offlaners left in the pool now. If you look at it. Oh no, no. I'm Five saying seconds. I agree that they should pick their offlaner, but I'm saying they sh they might want to pick into some survivable offlaner. Like an, I mean uh, a a uh, a Clinks matches up pretty well against Clockwork, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, to try to get the solo solo matchup. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just worried about if their guys could have to go up against the dry lane. Uh, LG Antarctica is kind of waiting on the last one. Uh, see, they're probably thinking about banning out the Prophet to get rid of the rest of the offlaners, hmm. but Clockwork is great against Radiant Prophet, and they just ban. go with the buck. Interesting. Um, I wonder if this is a scouting thing, uh, or if it's just a we don't like Puck, it's a good hero type thing. Um, Puck lane's okay against Viper, but I don't think it's particularly good. And they ban out the Weaver. Uh, Pokebunny is a very good Weaver player. Um, and, you know, it's just something you don't want to deal with. Uh, matched up against the Tri-Lane, if they went aggressive, it's a little harder to kill. Well, if they went aggressive, they'd probably try to do a lane swap and get the Weaver the solo versus solo. But Yeah. Yeah, Ten so I'm thinking about the Puck go. ban. I wonder if LGD is trying to get the uh, kind of monopoly on initiation. Five seconds. Because Puck's one of the top initiators right now after Clockwork. So if they're yeah. that out, they're going to have the ability to Reserve dictate when the time. fights are taken. Because neither Crystal Maiden nor Life Stealer is any good at doing that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good ban in my opinion. Um, but, I mean, there's so many initiators. Uh, Timbersaw? <laughs> we haven't seen a... Oh, excuse me, he's banned. Never mind. Banned that initiator. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, we haven't seen a game without Timbersaw on banned or picked in a long time, and this won't be one of them either. Yeah, they could go into a mag or something, but they're kind of looking like a 678 team if they do that. Got to be kind of unhip. I'm telling you, I think the Clinks is a good a good pick here. They're going to go Queen of Pain. Uh, Dyer's pick. I think this is fine against Viper. Viper still should technically win the lane, but Queen of Pain can lane just fine and then start rotating around. So we see the Visage pick up. Radiance pick. Kind of like a why not hero, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's kind of good now you pick this lane. Oh, they do go for the clinks. I've, tell, I've felt it. I've felt it in my bones. So, right now, our game is hard is just telegraphing that they want to do an aggressive tri lane because there's no other practical way to lane this. You don't want clinks up against a visage plus two lane. And it's going to be tough to win the tri versus tri when the other team already has visage. Although, yeah. both of Game is Hard's heroes are quite good in a tri lane Lifestealer and Crystal Maiden. Yeah. They could go really any support here, honestly. They could go... They, honestly, they could go, go like a Shadow Demon. They could go anything to win their tri-lane. Five seconds. And honestly, if I was LGD Antarctic, I, I would consider picking up the Shadow Reserve Demon because I actually really like him paired against Nyx. Or Nyx, excuse me. Well, he has very little synergy with Visage. Yeah, that's true. Although, if you get the amp off and then, or what's it called, the Shadow Curse, I guess, Poison Curse yeah. or something like that, and then use the Visage Nuke, that's a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, and you can combo it with Visage Stuns. I mean, how much easier to hit a stun than well, walk your birds over top? The issues with the parting would have to be addressed before level 6, I think. Yeah. But at that point, yes, it would be very helpful. And like I said, I love Impaired against Life Sealer because the, you just disrupt whoever he... he uh, open wounds, and then you can cast your ult on him, which slows him down. Very they good thing. Have they have enough to do with the lifesteal already with the Neither Strike and Clockwork stuff. Yeah, cogs don't push him, but they still cut up the fight. Yeah, or you can if you trap him in the cogs, it's still hard for him to get out. Yeah. <clears throat> LGDA, really thinking this one over. I'm kind of thinking they're going to go with the other support here, just make sure it doesn't get banned. But then again, what do I know? Yeah, the, I mean, I don't know what they're going to go there. A Bane. Okay. I was about to say Bane. Radiance Bane. It's the obvious pickup against Lifestealer. And I guess Clinks. And Queen of Pain. Clinks, great against Quop. Yeah. Uh, decent tri lane hero. Although, again, it doesn't have any real synergy with Visage because it's not like Visage has some kind of skill shot that Ten needs to set seconds up. To go. The damage is still good. Nightmare always has a lot of utility. There's a lot going for him. Five seconds. That's probably what LGD and Artico is going back and forth on is should we go for the tri lane synergy or should we just go with the support which makes sense against these heroes. So we see the Rubik ban out. That's extremely obvious. I think if they hadn't banned Rubik, it would have been almost a must pick for Game is Hard. Yeah. Rubik is quite effective against Viper because you can guarantee the ult steal. He has no other actives. Yep. And against Bane because it's the second easiest ult oh. to steal in the game. That's true. I'm kind of interested in the Marana ban because they're obviously going to ban out a tri lane carry. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, okay. I see why. The Marana Bane synergy is perfect. Ten seconds to go. Yeah. That would be a very good tri lane. Um, and now they're thinking about picking up their last support. Uh, honestly, I don't think this is an incredibly... 
I don't want to say it's not an Reserve important pick, time. but there are, they have a wide pool of heroes they could go for here. Well, I mean, it has to be good in a trial lane. You could see some off the wall, like a Witch Doctor, I think would be interesting, although I seriously doubt they'll do that. Uh, Witch Doctor could be nice because the bouncing stun with a channeling spun like main, but no, it's going to be a Tide Hunter. Pick. Hmm. Yeah, I can see why they want the team fight because there's actually not a whole lot of, or any AoE coming out from Antarctica. But he's going to really kind of strike a blow to their trial lane to the point where they might want to reconsider. My question is, if you want a Tide Hunter, why not go with a Warlock? Even worse in lane. Than Tide Hunter? Oh, yeah. You have a heal and you have the uh, spreading the damage. Are those really worse? Well, Tide Hunter brings actually like a deceptive amount of nuking Five power. Because at, like, at level 3, you'll have two levels in Smash, which you can just spam out, and one in Gush, which is nice for Life Sealer to catch up. Reserve time. Yes, that's true. And the Warlock can just run around, do his motto attacks, and, you know, I don't know if he'd have enough damage at that Ten point to make the link for a while. Maybe not, but he's faced okay. up against the Visage yes, Bane. Gyro Five seconds. Let's see if we get the Gyro. That's what I'm betting on. Yeah. Oh, man. Good guess. Yeah, so Sleep is also pretty good with Gyrocopter because it lets you get in range for the uh, Rocket Barrage, and if you're, uh, you can use it to set up the Homing Missile. Although, I kind of doubt they're going to go for any ranks in Homing Missile. Yeah, no, I think they're going to go Rocket Barrage, Flak, and then just walk up next to the, uh, walk up next to the Bane and just blow people up. Yeah, I mean, that's a fine setup. After you wake the guy up, you can pop the Visage slow on him, and he's not going to get away, and that's huge, huge damage. And that's the thing that you really, that's really helpful in tri lands like this. Kind of like nukes that do more than one Better nuke worth ready. of damage. You know what I mean? Like most nukes, pretty similar amount of damage but the rocket barrage is much more than that that gives you the yes. damage edge you need to win the lane so let's so see if they can get that combo to work so to go over players we've got uh big at is walking mid on the clinks he might go mid i expect him to go off lane and we see the defensive trial lane forming up with the crystal man being played by kng by the way the clink is being played by big at uh queen of pain is actually going mid as bastard zilla uh, interesting queen of pain set I'll have to take a closer look at that. Uh, Fizex, Fizex, we'll call him Fizex, is going top lane as the life stealer in the farming role. And then Matty Ice is going to be the third support in the defensive trial lane. Then on the dire, we have on LGD Ant. Uh, the clockwork is being played by, I'm not even going to try. Um, Mr. ABC is playing mid roll on the Viper. We've got. Uh, ooh, Sun Tzu is playing the Visage with Sub Zero playing the Bane, and finally Poke Bunny, the Starcraft Master on the Gyrocopter. Well, I guess at least we know if Poke Bunny goes for the Helm of the Dominator, he'll be able to micro the creep pole. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we see oh, yeah. no no real. Games Art is going offensive with gonna be a good. tight hunter support. So they're gonna if they can oh, right. luck into a kill early, then that'd be really helpful for them. Otherwise, it's gonna be a little tough with a melee support in the lane. Well, they walk right over a dire ward, so dire knows that there's a ward here, um, and they're <laughs> they're gonna jump on uh, the jar. Oh, this is gonna be a first blood, I suspect. Uh, Bane should sleep here if he has to, which he's gonna do. Gyrocopter's gonna walk up next to him, and he's just gonna explode right here. He doubles back. That's going to help him. He has a lot of hit points to go through, but the second Visage Slow is going to be too much. He gets a splash of Pokemon. He just out of anger, but it's not going to matter. I'm kind of surprised I didn't even try to help. But, uh, yeah. Also, I guess that's nice to go tight. He took actually a really long time to kill there. Yeah. I mean, but it wasn't time wasted. I mean, they're not in the, they don't need to be in the lane. That's true. But it was a good opportunity to get some free last hits and experience for the uh, now yeah, duo lane. Tide is making his way back up, though. Oh no, Tide going for the early gank here, I think. No, Possibly, I although we have a we have a dire ward looking over him. They're gonna see where he's going. That's it. They probably want to wait for more levels on the clop. Provide a little bit more burst damage to use on the viper. Oh, no, he's thinking about going on the Viper. The Viper's far enough out. Um, he's thinking about it, but they're seeing... Uh, they're seeing CM walk. Obvious, yeah. It's not going to be enough. 
they're going to wonder why they left Lifestealer by himself. Viper backs off. We might see a counter gank on Lifestealer top here. I wouldn't be surprised. All they need is a Bane sleep. Alright, so they're just going to throw out a Gush go home. He's going to be able to rage out, but... um. Well, no, that's the thing. With the Bane sleep, if you can follow up the Bane sleep with a stun, you can't rage it out because you're already disabled. Ah. Well, I guess they don't have anything to follow it up with. They don't have a stun right now. Pokebunny did not go rocket, he went flak. They might want to consider a rocket, I don't know. Although both the other skills are so good at trialing, it's hard to make space. Double damage. They do get a lot of damage on Mr. ABC in the mid, I will say that. It's kind of interesting, I guess now they're just kind of looking at almost like an offlane lifestealer with a roaming duo. Because uh, they haven't actually been in lane for a while, even though Ferex is doing not bad. Yeah. Phase X. Yeah, he's doing just fine. He's actually denying pretty well. Uh, the gyrocopter is still in the lead in farm, but he's got five last hits for which for having no supports could no, be worse. Fine, considering what the situation was. Yeah. I suppose they didn't actually try to kill. Well, I guess yeah, they don't have any open rage. Feeder. One level of rocket would do a lot of good here. It's a really tough lane to deal with. Oh, they're, going. they're thinking about going. They decided the better against it. Hmm. Tide Hunter's being pretty liberal with the gush. Now he's out of mana. Flat Cannon doing so much damage. Uh, Tide needs to be careful. He's He could easily nuke down if he gets within range. Yeah. Meanwhile, mid, uh, we see Viper farming quite well. Queen of Pain slightly under farmed, and that's kind of what we see in every lane. It seems like uh, LGD is just able to get a little bit more out of the lanes right now. Queen of Pain taking a lot of poison damage here. Game She's going to be in trouble. Fine. She blinks away. Well, Mr. ABC taking a bunch of uh, tower hits. She bottles up. She could think about going here, honestly. Not enough damage. I mean, she'd have to get a couple autos on. Well, maybe now. I don't know. No regen up on the Viper. Is a bottle coming out? Two salves. That's uh, unfortunate. We're going to get an Invisorin on Queen of Pain. This might be something to help GIH uh, make something happen here. She either could rotate mid with this, which not a bad idea. They saw her pick it up. I don't know if they saw her go invis, but he's playing pretty safe, so it looks like they probably did. If she wants to go, she should have gone already. And she does decide to blow her, blow her ult, or nuke, excuse me. But it's not going to be enough to do anything. Top lane, purple had to go back to base. So uh, Tide taking a lot of damage, having to go all the way home. He's taking a lot of damage, and he's uh, using his gush a lot, so he's out of mana, too. Yeah. See, this is tough. I mean, uh, Game's Heart is a situation where they're doing an offensive trial lane without really expecting to win it, almost. Just so they have space for their clinks. I mean, they're kind of getting by, but... They're not actually materially disrupting Pokemon's farm. No, but Klinks is actually farming quite well. We haven't talked about him yet, but he's 23 last hits. He's keeping up with the Gyrocopter. Um, matches up quite well against the uh, Clockwork. Yeah, Clock's probably going to want to get a dust pretty soon, so he can try to go for a kill at 6. Is he... Huh, that's interesting. Two points in Flare. He's just trying to have a little bit more map presence, you think? Um, it kind of seems that he's not super confident in the lane right now. Because the battery sold is the aggressive skill to get. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I would kind of like to have him see three points in assault, buy a dust, and then go for the kill on big AT. But it looks like he's decided it's too dangerous. But he went for bottle, so there's not going to be a dust coming out for a while. I don't know about uh, the aggressive use of Gush here by Matty Ice. He just doesn't have enough mana as Tidehunter. This is not what I feel about Tidehunter as a support. Is he's got such low mana, and he's not an intel hero, so his regen is extremely low. Fortunately, he's got a Crystal Maiden on his team. I don't get why they're having him spam nukes instead of the CM. So we see a D ward come out, but I think it's actually just too far away from the Radiance ward. Oh, and Viper gets a kill on Queen of Pain. I completely miss it. He looks like he picked up a haste rune. Yeah. Big 18 position, he's just going to ult the creep instead. 
Oh, they're going for it on top. If Rage out of the nakes, he's going to slow the bane and immediately back out. Radiance mid tower is coming up. The oh, the hook comes in. Oh. There you go. That's going to be double kill for Pokemon. Or a single kill. Bane gets the first kill. Oh, that's too bad. That's just unfortunate timing. I guess you can expect it when you see Radiance the clockwork out of lane, but running into the clockwork right when you're going for your gang, so you already blew your rage, is just too bad. Indeed, indeed. So we Radiance see um, five men top now. They're just going to try to take this tower quickly, and they're going to get it. Structures like this. It's too early for the title. Technical difficulties. Radiance top towers in bad shape. Yeah, I mean they're really keeping tied down. So I guess they figure they might as well get as much done as they can before he gets six. Could use a little help. He's not even close. Well, Pokemon are taking some damage here. They're gonna think about it, but Rocket Barrage is a lot of damage. A great defensive sleep by Bane passes it on to the Tide, who takes a lot of damage from the Clockwork. That's gonna be a double kill for the Clockwork. Or excuse me, the Gyrocopter. Clockwork Cog's able to secure two kills there. And Crystal Man's on the run. She should be able to get away unless... Uh, I don't think she'll get caught. Uh, the Queen of Pain's going to jump in here onto the Visage, but might be enough. Looks like it's going to be enough. There they go. They get one return kill, but that was an expensive return kill. I mean, that hole in game was just a disaster. So now they're a tower down, five kills down. They fed a bunch away. I mean, uh, they kind of they tried to initiate into the whole team. I guess they were just hoping they would leave Pokey Bunny Tower's behind. Bottom but towers getting the business. No, obviously not with that. So if you take a look at the XP graph, it's at fifteen hundred for LGD amps, and the goal graph also far up there, about three thousand. It's eight minutes, so that's a pretty decent, decent swing. Meanwhile, the bottom tower goes down to Clinks, which is expected, honestly. Um, if he's left alone down here, which he was in the last fight, he should be able to just take some towers. I mean, he's leading the CS chart. Uh, if we take a look at net worth, um, he's just below the gyrocopter. The gyrocopter is going to be higher because of the two kills. Um, but he's trying to rush his orchid. Um, he's got the two Sobe masks. Oh, LPNF, you're cutting in and out. An orchid's going to have a lot of use here. You can use it to cancel the bane ult. Yes. You there? Hello? Oh, we got a hook in by Clockwork. Clockwork's able yeah. to get a Cogs. Uh, that's going to be the CM dead pretty quickly. Viper gets a strike out on uh, Queen of Pain. That's going to be enough damage to kill her as well. We see some great plays coming out here from uh, Clockwork. Yeah. Yeah, Clockwork is just there whenever they're trying to do these ganks. It's kind of turning into a real problem for games hard. Whenever they yeah. try to gank, the Clockwork is already there with a hook. I think this is why teams always pick Clockwork, is he can just have such a great presence uh, in these mid-game fights. He just jumps in there, cuts the fight up, and then makes it a lot easier to pick out your heroes and kill them. Yeah, I mean, at this point in the game, the sport's just so yeah, squishy, you know, for Clockwork and his solo kill. Yeah. yeah. He's taking good advantage of that. I think the Clinks is trying to... I don't know if they keep his team in the game, but he's trying to just keep farming and maybe be able to do some of this mid-game damage that Gyro is able to do. Yeah, I mean, he has good farm, and he can, like, focus on get, actually getting the Orchid up. And the rest of the guys just need to stay out of trouble, I would say. Yeah. Although, uh... Yeah, that's in Bane's 4, Visage is 6 now, so we have the birds out and about. Gonna be another way for them to initiate these things, and also good with the cogs, obviously. Oh, we see another Clockwork kick, and he's gonna get CM again. Actually, this Viper's gonna get the kill, um... Bane's going to come in not close enough to grip anyone. And actually, he doesn't have grip. He's only level 4. So they're doing all this without even all of their level 6 ults. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard for the CM right now. She has less than 600 health. She's level 3. And if she shows her face lane, she's just going to get picked off by the clockwork. So where does she go to get experience? Yeah, because at the same time, she doesn't really want to steal experience from any of her other heroes. We see a Queen of Pain ult, which just tickles the other team. She has to get out quickly. We see a Sleep on the Tidehunter, which is going to get him caught. The uh, Slow comes out. Uh, going to be able to drop the Familiars. Misses the first stun. He rotates back towards the Viper. Gets another splash. Queen of Pain's back in there and infests in the Queen of Pain. She might jump out here. They do jump out. He goes on the Bane. He's going to be able to get the Bane on the backside. Queen of Pain might get rocketed down. No, she jumps in. Uh, Mr. ABC is going to go down to the tower. So that's two kills for nothing there. Yeah, well, that's kind of what they needed if LGDA is going to 
dive in that hard, you have to be able to get something back out of it. And they did a good job doing that. Got some good kills. It was like 600 gold for killing the Viper. Yeah. So that's going to help turn things down, around a little bit. But they're still at a pretty significant disadvantage. Yep. I mean, they kept their players alive, which is the important thing. Queen of Pain almost went down there. Uh, she was able to blink away from the fight briefly, bottle up a little bit, and jump back in. Uh, but the gyro is just free farming bottom now, which is, this is what you do if you're ahead. You try to take your carry out of play and let them just get more ahead. Yeah, I mean, because like right now, what I think James Hard are going to want to do is just evade fights and get the two guys farmed up a little bit. But problems with the clockwork, you can't really do that. Yeah. You can't evade fights with one of the best initiators in the game. Or it's hard, at least. Trouble brewing at Radiant's bottom tower. We see a TPM by uh, you know the Life Sealer, who's just gonna kind of push him, push uh, the gyro back out of lane. The so there's something one of right. We have a 13 minute tower. orchid up on. Uh, That's Lynx. pretty good. Um, so now he can try to rotate around. This mid tower might go down before he can help, though. And it's gonna go down unless they can TP someone in. Uh, there's gonna be uh, Tide coming in, who's not a level six yet. Um, debating. Viper wants to get this last hit. Denied by Queen of Pain. Well played. Hmm. Kind of curious what they're going to do now with the clanks. Are they going to start just hunting for pickoffs all day, or are they going to try to keep him farming and go for the BKB? Looks like right now he's going into the jungle looking for a kill. He's going to rotate that and find down. maybe the Bane, but it looks like they're all staying together. Actually, he gets the uh, the eat of the creep. So nothing yet. He, I think he's going to try to push a lane, get a little more gold. Um, Phasex might yeah. be in trouble down here. Uh, in a smart infest, but he infests his own creep, which means that uh, ABC is going to be able to get the kill. He picks the wrong creep, though. Clockwork's sitting there, and he's going to have to come out now. He's going to have to back up. Oh, the Clockwork hook is going to kill him. Yeah, well, not much he can do there. Ty's level 5, so they're getting close to having the team fight old. Uh, Big AT's invisible underneath them. The pings come out, uh, and they want to go on someone. They see the Bane. The, the uh, Orchid comes out. That's going to be a dead Bane. Nope. Oh, he does take over with the Orchid. Oh, poor, poor Crystal Maiden. There's not a lot for her to do. Yeah, that's kind of tough. Well, he got a kill for Clanks, and uh, I guess it's not one for one because the Nakes just died, but, you know, it wasn't like the fights on top where they were just getting rolled. Queen of Pain is still dangerously close. Let's take a look at net worth, net worth again. We see the Clinks on top, followed by the Gyro, but the big difference is the mid heroes. Uh, the Queen of Pain is uh, very far below the net worth of the Viper right now. We see her not with any real power items yet. Uh, you'd like to see her with maybe an Orchid, although I doubt she'll go Orchid at this point. Well, this um, early an Orchid be a pretty tall order. Yeah, but uh, well, I don't know if she's working towards yet. Meanwhile, bottom, you see LGD Ant grouping up, uh, getting ready to take this tier 1 tower, which they should be able to take pretty quickly with this catapult. Um, Dire fortifies in order to try to slow down this mid push, but they're going to be able to get mid before they get bottom. So, are they going to TP in and defend? That's the question. Well, the first guy in is going to get blown up by clock, so hopefully there's like a dunce. Yeah, it looks like they're going to not go in. They're going to try to farm up. Uh, they're actually going to push top here. Is the signal coming out? Is Tide 6? Uh, no. Mr. ABC is TPing in. Um, Tide? No, he's not. He needs to get 6. Yeah. They kind of want to. They should really ought to focus getting that level. Because then they can at least try for a 5 man. I mean, they, they would definitely have more of AoE damage, AoE disable. LGDA doesn't actually offer much of that at all. No. Um, and we see gyro, but. a lack of wards in the top lane from LGD Ant, so. This is the time, but actually they're all in the jungle now. So they're supporting their Viper. They know that something's up. They see everyone missing. They're waiting for a gank attempt to jump on. And yeah, we see Ty going bottom. Yeah, send him down there. Get level 6, and then they can think about actually doing stuff. And we see the 4 staff coming up on Clockwork. This is such a good item with him. Um, able to either get himself out of a bad situation with the cogs, or just pull someone towards the team. That's another good thing that you see it used for. Yeah, I mean, um, it'd be nice if he uses it on the life stealer because then he can get out instead of being stuck in there with the life stealer. Yeah. But uh, I would almost want to see something a little bit more aggressive out of him at this point. They're doing very well. He could afford to start saving up for an Aghanim or 
you know, even doing something weird like an arm light could work. Yeah. We're going to see Tide finally hit six here. There we go. Oh, man, but we have the 16-minute BKB up on Gyrocopter. Yeah, so he gets his non-BKB piercing AOE stun right as the BKB arrives in Gyro. Titaning for Pokebunny is pristine here. This guy can farm. Are oh, they going to go on the Viper on top? Who's just going to turn it around? They're going to try to nuke him down, do but... That oh, that was... They just don't have enough damage. He's gonna kill the oh, my God. He's going to get a double here. Yeah, he's going to get... See if CUM can get away. Uh, do we have a rocket? They do have a level one rocket. Clinks comes in here. Oh, the flak. What range? So Clinks could go invisible and try to go for a uh, an orchid gank on ABC, but I don't think he's going to. Not enough out of tide yet. Uh, so Clinks here looks like he's gonna go for a crit because I guess he just said, "All right, they have so much stuff to get. I'm not even gonna bother getting one and just go for more damage and arrive yeah. my positioning and Tide stun." We'll see if that works out. Which is not a bad idea because Tide's gush is a minus armor spell. So combine that. Oh man, Mr. ABC is deep. We see an immediate rage, and they might try to turn this around on him. I don't know what he's doing. Um, he's really confident that no one's gonna kill him. Twelve hundred health. He has a two fifty heal. He has way more damage than anybody over there. I mean, they ganked him two man, like a minute ago, and he killed one of them, both of them. That's true. The magic resistance from the uh, corrosive skin is kind of turning into a really big problem, because uh, Game of Star doesn't have much physical damage up yet. So the magic resistance plus mech on Viper is kind of too much to deal with. Yeah. They're thinking about a fight here. They know Tidal is up, but they're af they're afraid to engage into it. But at the same time, GIH can't go for any kills here. They know that the whole team is probably here. We see Clink's back. Um, he's got his crit stick, so he's doing some damage now. He's doing 180 damage plus crits. Plus fireball. Oh no, the hook again. There's going to be a Tidal coming out. There's the Tidal. They actually hit uh, Pokemon before he's able to get his... Oh, that's a waste of the Bane ult. And Pokemon actually goes down to Big AT. If Big AT can get out of here, this is going to be a good trade. Sounds silly, but two supports for the Gyro carry. Yes, I'll take it. But the thing is, that could get on even better if... Uh the clock waited just like a split second before Radiant he popped his cogs because he saw the tide is moving around. So he grabbed Radiant the tide too in the cogs and that forced tide to pop the ult before he really wanted to. Yes. Because the other three damage dealers were not in position to take advantage of it. No. So they still got a kill, but. Yeah. Well, the problem was Sub. To show that Game's Art isn't completely out of it yet. They would have had an even better run of it if Sub Zero hadn't um, blown his ult on an already dead tide. If he'd held that and cast it on Clinks, they would have been able to turn around for three kills and possibly not lose a gyro. Have they gotten Clinks? Oh no, they could be Clinks, but I think, yeah, Game Starker would have been nervous about it. Yes. Clinks barely able to escape top lane. We get a nice little lull and time to check some of the graphs. We see. What is that? 6,000 experience for LGD Ant and about 5,000 gold. So they are in a solid lead. Um, it's a nice lead. It's not dominating by any means. The Clinks is actually doing very well, sort of keeping him in on the charts. And it was just on the last fight. He is providing good damage. Yes. So, no, that's something they have. Lifestealer, I mean, he only has armlet, but he can kind of get by, you know. He's, he's good against uh, Gyro because he can get up in his face with the magic community. So they, you know, they're not doing too bad actually, considering how. If Clinks make, makes the mistake of engaging here, he's going to be sad. Oh no, he doesn't. He holds off, which is good. Yeah, that would have been horrible. Pinks him out. He, he might have been able to pick off uh, the bane on the back end, but uh, pinks him out. F Fares has to know what's going on, so he's going to try to TP out on the uh, life stealer. Uh, the oh, rocket's going to catch him, but he rages. Hook him. Hook him, hook him. Oh no. That's going to be it. Oh, that's the uh, beauty of having a BKB piercing stun. You can cast two screens away. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it's always a good thing to have. Uh, that was a really good flare, actually. That gave him vision he needed for the uh, hook. Otherwise, he would have been free to go. Yep. It was a very good play. He was actually about half a second away from completing his TP as well. We were just giving him a little glimmer of hope. We see a five-man ball, or four-man ball, excuse me, bottom with LGD Ant. Uh, they're going to try to take this tier two. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Tidal is up again. We haven't seen a Crystal Main ult yet because she's a level five. That would be why. Um, I think, honestly, they need to focus on getting her level six because they need, uh, at this point of the game, two perfect ults to be able to do anything. That's true. I mean, it'll be tough. There's one thing like the Visage Birds seem pretty likely to just go over and stun her if she starts doing that. But they have to at least try, I think. But Yeah, Clockwork Hook is up. So Ready any of these uh, supports try to do anything. If he hooks in on them, uh, that's going to be the end of their ult. Oh, but they're just going to back out instead. They don't take risks. I think they're probably going to gear up for Shannon. Well, Clinks is taking the tier 2 top. You know the drill. Oh, there you go. So, big AT. Yeah, they are going in for the Roshan. Uh, I don't think... No, they do have a Medallion. Yes. Medallion. Medallion. The pings are coming out. That's from the Clinks. No, he's not doing it. It's the good old Medallion fake. Clinks pings, but chooses not to uh, try to get a steal here. Uh, they don't have a gem, so he could do it. Old Roche won't be coming back for a while. That's so, so risky, and they can't afford him dying. Yes. It's not even close. I don't know. It's way too risky. So Gyro now is an Aegis. Helm of the Dominator in, what, 3,700 gold? Oh, he bought... Okay, he's going in for a butterfly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Last time we looked, he had 3,300 and no eagles. I want to mine the top tower. So this, guy, uh, this guy can farm. Yeah. The butterfly is going to be good since the uh, Clinks is going in for BKB Daedalus instead of BKB MKB. MKB, yeah. Picked the wrong king bar. Oh, turn around and kill him. You can kill him. You can totally kill him. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about killing Mr. ABC. Do it, Clinks. Do it. Oh, no. Too late now. Is pretty close. Well, now he is. He wasn't before. If he just immediately popped all the spells, he could have killed him and then Ghost walked into the trees. There's way too many guys off the map, and you cannot afford to get killed with the Clinks right now. They need yeah. to have him keeping, put pressure on the towers. He's like all of their damage. It's just not something they can afford to have happen. So if we look at kill death assist, which took me a little while to find, um, eight and one on the Viper, six and one on the Gyro. Clinks has not died yet, which I think is helping him a lot. He hasn't lost any money from that. Um, on the life stealer, as far as items go, we have the armulet up. We have a finished butterfly on gyrocopter now, so he just became a whole lot harder to kill. Um, are we seeing a sheep stick coming out of Queen of Pain? No. It looks like she's going to go for a. Could, oh, she, of course, she's going for uh, eggs. Which just stuff. Uh, if you look at the trial lane from Game is Hard, they're currently sitting at one in fifteen, just because they didn't pick a strong enough tri lane Radiant they came out to really low hurting. level and they just kept getting killed by the clock Radiant the structures must have been fortified. they've only gotten one good ravage oh, tied yeah. ravage that's going to be kind of a good ravage if they can get a kill here queen of pain gets a freeze is she got an ult she does not have ult up yet she has to get out of there uh oh this is going to be bad for clinks he's got to run there's going to be a lot of damage and it, he finally gets the enfeeble so there goes all of his damage from searing arrows Might be able to get familiar, which he does. It was um, really funny to watch that, because, you know, the tide runs up, he has a bunch of spells on the bane, but he's so low level, it barely even scratches him, he heals it all back, and then the Clinks comes in with actually, like, decent items, just blows him up. Yeah. From a weird disparity within one team. Where did that missile come from? Did I don't know. All the way across the map? It might have, I wasn't looking. Uh, we see an Ag Scepter complete on Queen of Pain now, so her ult is now hitting for about 475 damage, but there's so much minus damage, or minus uh, magic on the other team. Viper, well, you're not going to do anything. Yeah. So many BKBs out. Well, I think what they're trying to set up here is with the Queen of Pain, Agonims, and the Crystal Maiden Nova. That's pretty good counter push. So you can just blow up creep, creep waves coming in and let Clanks go to the other side and push out towers. Because I they probably don't want to take too many team fights even with the uh, Ravage. So this will let them hold off the towers pretty easily. Yeah, right now if LGD Ant's team is together, just the damage from Flak and the extra life from the uh, Aegis coming out of Gyrocopter is going to be way too much. 
<laughs> yeah, so we'll just use nukes, hold the creeps away from the tower, and... Clinks is invisible up here? He, someday he's gonna get caught by a gem, he needs to be careful. Um, he's thinking, but he sees the whole team, there's no way. His BKB is actually in the base. We see a hook shot, go in, oh, tide, no, he's just gonna melt. My life ends. Um, and th they're gonna have to back out for this, they need Tide's extra damage. Oh, Crystal Man's gonna die again. She's level 8, did not level her ult at all. They might be able to turn this around to Mr. ABC, they get the silence out. He's so tanky, but Clinks' damage is gonna be too much. That's a good trade. It wasn't really a trade, but... That, good. Was, that was a good sequence of events. Yes, they are able to get a kill, which is important. Uh, LGD Ant's going to immediately rotate to bottom tower, uh, but uh, GIH is going to be in position to defend this. Yeah, um, if they can hold Trouble up brewing a radiant bottom tower. Tidar can TP in with the Ravage. Uh, they need to oh, get there quickly. Yeah. Here he comes. Oh, we see the Queen of Pain ult go down. The Oh, no, the 10-second BKB. Oh, this is going to be terrible. Dies before he can Ravage. There's two down. There's going to be three GIH Big ATs in big trouble, and that's just the power of massive flat cannon damage. Yeah, I mean, he didn't want to pop Ravage because only the BKB Gyrocopter was in range, and then he just ended up dying. So, yeah, I mean, they were... They didn't really initiate so much as just attack, Yeah, I would say. And they kind of paid for it. You can see why they wanted to get something out of it. They almost let it, they let them get almost all the way through the tier two for free. That's a they very able to go for the ravage. But. It's very hard for tower to fight at as well because you know there's so many lanes of attack. You can come in from the top. You can come in kind of from the side and from the bottom. It's just a very hard place to get a good fight if you're a radiant. Yeah, the train is an amazing. There's a hill, so if you get down that hill, if you back up too far, all of a sudden you're missing uphill. Ward City down here. He gets the Visage Bird. Um, gets a D Ward. They're not going to get the D Ward down here. He's going to jungle a little bit. Uh, it looks like he's going to try to complete his Daedalus. And we have Satanic. This guy, money making. Uh, Satanic up on Gyrocopter. He's getting ridiculous to kill now. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what Game is Hard needs to do here. Get some pickoffs. Yeah, they need to look for pickoffs. I think actually a clockwork pickoff would be pretty good. Because, I mean, if they get the Visage, you know, LGDA can still fight, push a tower if they want. If what they, they need... Clockwork, game's hardly free to defend the tower with nukes, and they won't be able to initiate onto them. What they need is they need a uh, sheep stick up on Queen of Pain, so they can get rid of the evasion, and then just hope that Clanks can blow them up before Viper kills them. Honestly, they're not going to attack. They need a plane that doesn't involve a sheep stick. I mean... She's not even close. No, I know. I mean, it's. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm just saying that's That's the way I could see killing Gyrocopter right now. He's even getting the tower right. kills. Dyer's bottom tower's getting the business. Clinks is counter pushing here, but they're going to lose their tier 3 and maybe lose some racks. Uh, Ravage is going to come out. He hits it, and he does not get his BKB up, but there's no damage here. They get the grip on him. That's a waste of a grip, in my opinion, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Queen of Pain's a little too late to the party. There's going to be two more dead here. Uh, he might be able to get Bane. Bane's four staffed away. Oh, no, he's not going to get Bane. He's actually just going to die. Clinks is going to try to get Bane on the back end, but he's going to have to back out. Oh, that was too bad. They were hoping that throwing the ult like that would make them just run out so they could keep pushing, but they just fought instead. Uh, Viper's uh, Poison Strike is just does so much damage to Clinks. He just doesn't have a lot of health. Top racks. The tier 3 goes down, and it looks like they're going to be able to get the racks here. No problem. No Ravage to slow this down. It's very hard to do. So long to the Radiant's top racks. The first fly in a top and GG's called. Radiance so that's going to be it for game number one. Uh, Clinks is able to keep them in it for a while, uh, but it's just not enough in the end. Oh, um, There's something with replays right now. Not sure. There's what? Uh, people can't download replays right now. You should take a screenshot of the score screen. Oh, good call. The teams forget too. Yes, I will do that.